go ahead and mute yourselves. That would be amazing. So this is going to be like a conversation class. I didn't pass any recipes, so we're not cooking together. I think I'll do that later in the week. But this is just me talking about, you know, um, health, um, how to cook with self-love, how to cook for sustenance, and then also for your sanity. Since we're all at home, hopefully you can hear me all okay. Um, we all need to figure out, you know, how to cook for ourselves, not get bored of it, um, cook with limited resources. And I know a lot of women out there are really panicking and they don't know what the heck to do. Um, so I wanted to come on here and just talk about um, some foods that would definitely nourish you during this time, that specifically nourish, nourishes your lungs, um, your immune system, your blood, because for women, blood is a big deal for us. Hi and um, go over some of those things. And then at the same time that I'm talking, I'm gonna be showing you how to prep a particular recipe that I really love. And I wanted to start first with just a very grounding kitchen meditation that I do anytime I walk into my kitchen space. And it's very, very simple because not enough people look at their kitchens as a very safe Zen zone. And in order to nourish yourself with the self-love that you love, you know, you need and deserve, it's really important. So you can just watch or you can follow along with me. So take your left hand and put it on your heart and your right hand on your belly. Make sure your feet are flat on the ground. If you're sitting, that's totally fine. Just make sure your shoulders are back. You're completely relaxed. And then the inhale through your nose, filling up through the, your belly and then all the way up into your lungs, expanding your lungs and your ribs. And then exhale through your mouth, going from your ribs all the way down to your belly and then not holding it, just continuing again. These are called rolling breaths. Exhale. And then set the intention of nourishment from your heart going down into your belly and into your digestive system. If we don't have good digestion in our lives and in our bodies, we are not healthy people. It's all about our digestion. And at this moment, it's all about nourishing our lungs and nourishing our immune system. So just send yourself some love. And that's really how I like to start off being in the kitchen at my cutting board whenever I'm about to cook. And setting the tone of when you come in here is really going to help your experience. Um, too many people come into a kitchen and they feel like they have to rush, they feel panicked, they don't know what to do, they feel pretty clueless, and harboring those types of feelings will basically make you not digest properly. Um, it will affect the way your food tastes. Um, you typically won't make anything good if you have those kinds of feelings. So it's really about shifting your perspective from to, from, to be, to be um, in a more, much more positive place. Um, all of you, can you just please um, mute yourselves? And then I'm going to continue. If you have any questions, definitely unmute yourself and say, hey, Kiali, I have a question. This is going to be conversational, so it's not going to be just me. But just for the meantime, that would really be awesome. Um, the next thing I want to do is just talk about some specific foods that you all should be eating to help heal yourselves from what the heck is going on. Um, a lot, not a lot of that is being said. It's really more about just staying home and staying put and helping your elders and that's it. No one really knows what we should be eating. And when you go to a grocery store, I'm sure all of you, you're pretty panicked because some aisles are just, they don't have anything in them. And then when I went the other day, the produce section was packed, which I find to be really interesting because that's all the food that we all should be eating. So just to go over some foods with you and just to show you what I'm gonna be preparing. Well, first of all, I just gotta say that I love it when I'm in a kitchen and I have my little kitchen uniform on and that's really just an apron with a hand towel on my side. And it's kind of like me putting on my like kitchen crown, if it <laughs> makes any sense. It, it prepares you for doing what you gotta do in the kitchen and um, nourishing yourself. So if you don't have an apron, I, don't, I have one of those, I think this is one of the ones that goes over my chest. I really don't like those um, because I like having my heart exposed. And also it teaches me to be a little bit more clean. So I just fold it in and then tie it in the front and then put my little kitchen towel here. And this is very helpful if I'm wiping my hands or anything like that. Hi, hi Hollis. 
Um, happy, thank you for being here. So this is really helpful to like wipe your hands if you're getting it wet, even to take the knife and wipe down your knife, it really helps. Um, now that I'm on this topic, I might as well just go over all of this. So I'm just gonna point this down. And for those of you who have taken my self-love cooking challenge and have worked with me, you already know this, but I'm doing it anyway, because this is, it's time to share. I think it's really important. So I have my cutting board here, and it's a butcher block cutting board. You can really have any kind of cutting board you desire. So there are plastic ones with rubber on the end of it. There's so many, the only, Thing that I recommend is that you make sure it doesn't slip on your countertop. What I've done here is take a wet paper towel, it's a little bit damp, and put it down so it doesn't move. Countertops are very slippery. The last thing you want is to be working on a countertop and like something shifts and it's all over the place and it's very unsafe. So whatever, you're, whatever you decide your cutting board is going to look like and be, it's perfect the way it is. Just make sure you have your own dedicated space because to me, this is like a desk. This is where I work. This is where everything's gonna go. Um, this is where I organize my space. Just allocate one part of your kitchen. Even if you live in New York City and you have a 400 square foot apartment, allocate one area to just shopping. I swear it'll change your life. The next thing I recommend getting um, is a chef's knife and it's about nine, eight to nine inches long. It has a curved down blade like this, the blade's on the bottom. And the way you hold your knife is you take your thumb and your index finger and do a little pinch and then put it around this area. This is called the holster of the knife. And then take your three loose fingers and then just grip it like this. This is ergonomically correct rather than doing this or holding it in a funky way where ouch, you can chop your finger off. It's better like this because then the tip of the blade all the way to your elbow becomes one piece. So then it just makes it so much easier to chop. It really does help. So I encourage you to practice this method and taking the two fingers, pinching it on the holster, grabbing it with the other three fingers. The end of the knife is kind of gonna be on your wrist here. I swear it'll change everything. Um, the, and what I like to do whenever I chop, my whole practice is cutting board etiquette, keeping the cutting board completely clean. It gets really hard when you're doing all these things with all this stuff everywhere, because then you're just sort of, you know, figuring out where to cut. So as much as possible, and I'll show you this when I start chopping, keep everything off the cutting board and only work on one item at a time. It really helps also when you have something like this. This is called a pastry scraper. I encourage you all to just get on Amazon and get these and I can give you the links for this too. But these are great because when, I'm just gonna chop this. When you start to chop stuff on your cutting board, instead of picking it up piece by piece, you just take this, boom, and then put it in a bowl. Um, and I'll show you which bowls I have, but this just makes life so much easier. And I swear it's a game changer. So it's called a pastry scraper. Another item that I always have on hand in my cutting board etiquette types of classes is a damp kitchen towel. You can get a ton of these on Amazon. It's really easy um, to, to get. I think they come in a dozen for like $6 or something. Um, they're ethical, it's better than paper towels. And I have one here to wipe down anything that I'm cutting because God forbid you cut an onion and then an apple and then it just, the apple tastes like an onion and nobody's happy. Um, it's just much better to clean this down. You kind of have to treat your cutting board like a, you know, your best friend and your tool. That makes a lot of sense. And then the last thing that, um, two last things that I have and I make sure I invest in, I just picked these up from my apartment last night. I have a set of clear nesting bowls. If you have these, amazing, but these are really great when you're starting to do some prep because it makes it so much more fun and so much easier. So what I like to do is just have them all set, you know, in front of my cutting board, whatever I need. But I make sure that I have one, only one dedicated to trash and scraps. So this is especially helpful if you're cutting an onion or anything like that, um, and then pick it up with your pastry scraper. Like for example, I just cut all these potatoes, let's say, that's scraps and then these I'm saving for something, you know, something I'm actually gonna cook. It makes life so much easier because then all you have to do is just dump this in the trash. When you abide by all of these types of kitchen rules, let me pick this up a little bit. 
it makes your life so much easier and so much more fun and it really creates for a better experience. The last thing that I want to show you is called a Tawashi. Now, I don't use any of the fruits and veggie washes. I mean, sometimes I use a little bit of white vinegar and some water and dilute it, um, but that's pretty rare. It depends on what I'm, what I'm washing. But I love this because this is a Japanese like dry bristle brush. It's very hard. I don't put soap on this. What this I use is, I use this to clean like hard vegetables like this and really get in the nooks and crannies. Um, I can show you what like using one side regular water and the other side Tawashi looks like. It's, it'll change your life. The cool thing about this is that if you are a fan of dry brushing, it's basically the same concept um, on the fruit and vegetables. So what this does is that it activates the skin of the vegetable if you're going to eat it to like come alive again. You have to think about it that way because a lot of the fruits and vegetables, not necessarily at the farmer's markets, but the ones that have been in the grocery stores for, you know, weeks. And then even before that were in containers, like storage containers for months, they're already sort of dead. So this not only cleans it, but it makes it come alive. So again, this is called a Tawashi. I think it's really helpful to have. Um, so you should definitely get one of these. And if you have any questions or comments, just write it in the comment section because I'm seeing all of them come up. Or you can just unmute yourself and say, hey, Kelly, I have a question because I want this to be more conversational than anything else. Any questions so far? Am I good to go? Sweet, okay, guys. Super happy you're here. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, let me see what I'm gonna talk about right now. Um, foods to help nourish your lungs and your immune system and your body right now. Um, because this virus attacks our lungs, it's really important to have foods that nourish our lungs and our large intestine. So the number one food that I wanna talk about today, which is great, are radishes. And I just cleaned a bunch of these. And it's funny because at the grocery store, I saw a ton of these. Radishes are your friend. Um, they have an amazing pungent type of flavor. Um, they're really, really delicious. They are a little bit spicy. And what I'm gonna do is make a little recipe today using the tips. The tips are very bitter and they help with the circulation in your body from an Eastern medicine perspective. Um, and they are really good with this dish. So basically, let me get a bowl. So this is a super, super easy recipe and I'll just show you what I'm doing this whole time. So I'm just gonna take the tips like this, literally throw them in a bowl. This is what we're doing here. Um, a lot of times people are afraid to cook or they think that it has to be like a big complicated situation and it really just doesn't. You know, cooking is a time to get experimental and creative. Um, and that's one thing I really like to promote is just using different parts of the food that will help heal different parts of your body. So radish chips are really good um, for you. And they have, they're a fire energy food. So if you know anything about Eastern medicine or you're curious, uh, fire energy foods uh, really help with body circulation. They help bring like really fun, fiery energy to the body. And especially because we're staying at home nowadays, um, it's important that we don't stay stagnant and we just keep our spirits up. So fire energy foods do that. So as you can see, I'm just like ripping these into pieces because I can. <laughs> and I'm putting them in a bowl. And that's pretty much it. So this recipe is going to be, can you all see me? Okay, okay let me move that for a sec. So this recipe is going to be just radishes, radish tips, golden beets that I've already roasted, and what else am I putting in there? That's pretty much it. And a, oh, and oranges, and I'll show you how to do those. But radishes are amazing because what they do is they help get rid of any phlegm and like gunk that we have in our lungs, and they're super cool. Um, they are, let me see, did someone write something? Oh, did I use the scraps from the food to make a vegetable stock? Yes, I do. Um, I pretty much use any scrap ever, even onions. Um, so if I'm gonna chop down an onion, I take the skin and I throw it in there. Um, it's just a more ethical way of eating and cooking is to use pretty much all of the scraps. There are very few greens that I don't use the tops for. 
Right now, I can't think of them at the top of my head, but they're very few. Like I eat beet greens, I eat beet stems. Energetically speaking, every part of a vegetable has a different energetic property for your body. Um, so if you think about it, root vegetables are very grounding. If they're literally grown below the earth's surface, they're grounding foods. Once they come above the earth's surface and the stalks, they give you very like strong energy. So think about like how, how thick and strong like a celery stalk is. Um, it's, it gives you strength. And then the leaves give like outward bursting energy and flowers give a lot of energy to um, your sinuses and your brain. It gives you tons of clarity. So if you start thinking about food that way, it can really change your experience. So I just took these radishes and I just chopped them up and I'm gonna do the rest here. And if anyone has any questions, just hop off of um, mute and let me know. But this is really just to show you how easy it is to just get, use fresh food and heal yourself from it. So I've been eating a ton of radishes, like pretty much, wow, three, four times a week. The more I can get them, the better. Um, they're really easy to pickle. They're awesome to just snack on. If you make a hummus, they're really easy as well to like just snack on. And it's funny because all of the food that I would get to heal myself with, no one's getting at the grocery store. So it's pretty fascinating. Let me just cut the rest of these. Um, other foods that you should be getting and stocking up on, I have over here and I'm gonna show you once I finish just chopping these cute little vegetables. Mm. Alice, did you have a question? Because you came up on my screen, so I was wondering. Okay, so let me show you really quick other foods that you should be getting at the grocery store. Ha ha ha, here we go. Sweet potatoes, any kind of squash, these are your friends. Um, they are earth element foods. They are really delicious for you. Um, they keep outside of the refrigerator. I mean, I've probably had this one for a couple weeks. Um, this one maybe more. If they start to get these little nubs on them, don't be afraid of them. Just pull them off. They're not going to hurt you. I think too many people freak out about just food in general and, and when something goes bad. Um, if you think about the history of potatoes, in the United States and in this country, you know, they've been around for forever and they basically keep for months with no refrigeration. So I wouldn't be afraid of these and definitely stuck up on these because they're so versatile. You can roast them, you can use them in soups, you can blend them, you can barbecue them. I mean, there are so many ways of using these um, root vegetables um, and earth element vegetables. Other ones you should definitely stock up on, Ginger, ginger is your friend. Um, ginger will help boost your immunity. Um, it will help clear up pretty much, it's an antiseptic. It'll clear up anything that's going on in your body. And I really love it. And since I have this here, let me show you a fun way to peel ginger. So I like to use a spoon. I don't like to use a knife because it's much, much easier. Ooh, this one's a little bit hollow. Let me use this one. It's much, much easier to, um, to maneuver, so especially around these like curved nooks and crannies. So I just take a spoon, face it downward, put my thumb on the top of the spoon, and I just start to peel. And this is the easiest way, because then you can maximize the amount of ginger. That way, instead of like cutting this whole part off, it doesn't really make any sense. Um, and when I work with you know the women that I coach and I talk to about food, I really encourage them to when they're cutting food and when they're prepping food to not rush in this process. I mean, even as I cut this ginger, it's more about being appreciative of the food that's in front of you and the food that is grown specifically for us. I mean, even with the ginger like this, if you think about it, this was grown in the ground specifically for our own nourishment that is going to help different parts of our bodies. And if you start to shift your perspective on food, to that, toward that direction, it'll really just 
make you way more appreciative and maybe encourage you to cook more. So just to give you an idea, I just peeled this entire ginger with the back of a spoon and it worked perfectly. And so you maximize the amount of ginger that you have. Um, it smells really good and it's a way of just connecting with your food. That being said, and then look how easy that was just to wipe all of it up. More foods that you should be getting at this time, and this is super important for you know your lungs, onions, garlic, let me see what else I got here. Onions and garlic. Um, onions get rid of parasites in the body. Um, they help nourish your lungs. Same thing with garlic. Um, garlic is really, it's just amazing. Um, it's good for your immune system. It's good for, again, clearing up any type of anything in your body. Um, it gets rid of like dampness in your body. As women, we hold a lot of dampness in us more so than men um, because we just run with more fluids. So I don't know about you guys, but I have um, a big susceptibility to respiratory issues and lung issues. So I'm being very careful at this time and pretty much everything that I'm cooking now, I'm putting onions and I'm putting garlic in because like more so than ever before, because I really want to nourish that in my own body. Okay, I have a question. Hi, Arinda. Um, any tip on keeping ginger from drying up or should I just not store it for that long? Mine keeps dehydrating in a pan. Ooh, okay, I mean, uh, what I like to do, honestly, is just put it in a little Tupperware. I have like these um, Pyrex ones that are stackable uh, and they have lids. Put it in there, that's pretty much it. Or if you don't have those, just take a piece of plastic wrap and that's, that's it, that's all I do. You can, if you have a food processor, grind it up if you want and store it in a little like mason jar. That's another way of doing it if that pleases you. But um, I typically just put it in a little Tupperware. And then what I like to do as well, uh, I always keep um, a roll of masking tape in my kitchen with a Sharpie. So anytime that I um, have a food or it's gonna go in a container in the refrigerator, I'm not to say I'm OCD, but sometimes it's just really helpful to be organized. I just write down what it is, the date that um, I put it in there, so then that way I know. Or I sometimes put the date like when I need to eat it by. <laughs> it just really depends on how your brain works, but this really, really helps. Um, is there any difference between fresh garlic and the ones already in the jar? Yes. Uh, there is a difference, Hollis. Great question. Um, the one in the jar has been prepackaged. You don't know how old it is. Um, it sometimes goes dead. I'm afraid of botulism, which is basically when there's bacteria that forms in garlic specifically that can make you really, really sick. Um, and a lot of times what different companies do is they put different preservatives in there that aren't the best for you. So if you can get it fresh and whole, do that versus getting it in a jar. But if they don't have it, you know, obviously then go in the jar form. But, um, and if you're gonna get those, I would get them in the smaller jars versus the larger jars. Because the larger jars, you don't use that much garlic over time. And it ends up just kind of going bad. And then it just ends up being in your refrigerator as a lost other component that just stays there. Unless you're the type of person that loves garlic and you know loves to eat it, then that's a different story. But most times in my experience, when people have those big minced garlic jars, it, they use maybe half of it and then they forget about it in the refrigerator. So I'm of the mindset that the more um, whole you can get it, the better. Um, yeah, yeah, good. Um, garlic is just really awesome. So during these times, definitely eat more ginger, more onions, like stock up on the onions. They don't go bad. You don't need to keep them in the refrigerator. Um, I mean, they do after a while go bad, but they take way longer and then garlic for sure. Um, another, another vegetable that you definitely should be getting more of, and this is in the root vegetable category, are beets. These are golden ones, get red ones. I'll tell you why. Um, beets are one of my favorite, favorite foods for women because you can't talk about women's health without talking about blood. And we create blood and lose blood monthly. So beets are really great because they are blood building. They circulate our blood around, they cleanse the blood. I used to make a joke years ago that beets are basically like a blood transfusion for our bodies. Um, and we can't be healthy without having good blood. And the four main organs that our blood filters through and works through is obviously our heart, 
um, our liver, our kidney, our lungs, and our spleen. So as long as you keep good blood and good blood keeps filtering through those organs and they're working together, you're all right. So I've seen a lot of these at the grocery store just stuck up on these beets. Um, even if you were to just get the loose ones and keep them out, like do that. But I love beets because they taste delicious, they're sweet, they're like nature's candy. And paired up with radishes, they make a beautiful combination. So I've already, where are they? Here they are. I've already roasted some beets here this morning and had them cool so I could show you how to work with them. Um, and I decided to get golden beets because that's what the grocery store had and it makes this look pretty in the little salad that I'm gonna make. So I just roasted these beets completely whole. Oh, they're super soft. And I kept the skin on. I cut off, here I'll show you. I cut off the root part and I just flattened it out so it could stand up. And what I'm gonna do now is just take two paper towels and I just peel the skin off. It comes off so easily. Some people, you know, when they work with beets, they just peel the skin off before. I don't because I like looking at the skin as like a chamber <laughs> um, that holds in all the goodness and the color. So there's your little beet. This is super, super good for you. Um, it's gonna boost your immune system, build your blood, make you feel really good. Um, I, I just love this recipe. And what I can do for those of you on here is share the recipe with you. It's super simple. But between the bitterness of the radishes, yeah, the bitterness of the radishes, the pungency and the bitterness of the, the greens, the uh, radish greens, the sweetness of the beets, and then I'm gonna show you how to supreme an orange. It's really good. So, simply put, very easy. Just cut off this guy. Um, the fun thing is that you can get creative and make rounds, but I'm not. I'm just gonna chop these. as best as possible, just into little bite-sized pieces. And put them in the salad. So as I do this, I want to talk about just ways to feel more comfortable in the kitchen and um, to not feel as stressed. I feel like, you know, now people are working from home, they have their kids or just a lot of things going on. They're getting a little stir crazy. Um, I encourage you to get in your kitchen, spend an hour or two and focus on your own nourishment and experimenting with food. Go to the grocery store and since we have limited supplies, get things that you may have never gotten before. I don't know how many of you have ever gotten an acorn squash before, but it's really delicious and they're really fun to work with. And as long as you practice good cutting board etiquette, play some music, pour yourself a glass of wine or whatever, and have fun. If you have kids, make an activity with your kids, help them help, have them help you like peel a beet or make a stock. Um, what I am recommending for pretty much everybody um, Who's, is who's at home to cook a stock while they're working. I really like doing that because you use up all the fresh vegetables that may be going bad. Um, it makes the house smell good. Boiling down food is a very gentle way of working with food and energetically in your body, it's really soothing and calming. So naturally you're already bringing that experience to yourself in the kitchen by having something just on a low, low boil or simmer, and it makes the house smell so good. So a uh, great recipe for a stock, which is called a mirepoix. Um, it's 50% onion, 25% carrot, 25% celery, but I put pretty much anything in there. I have some parsley here that some of it is going, you know, a little bit limp. I throw that in there. I throw a ginger. I throw a potato. The, anything that you can put in that stock pot and flavor, flavor it and then just add some good quality salt. Don't forget to salt. Um, that's really, really important. So 
Um, on the topic of salt, and I'm just given as much juice as possible, it's really important to have good quality salt, not the crappy table salt. And some of you may know this, some of you may not, but it, get some good quality kosher salt. Oh, my connection is unstable. Uh-oh, what's going on? Can you You're guys fine. Okay? okay, cool, awesome, thank you. Um, get some good quality salt. Salt is an important mineral. We are made up of like 30% salt. I think the statistic now is like 70% of all of the bad salt that we get in our diet is from um, packaged goods. And I think only like a mere seven or 11% is from the actual food that we like cook. So get good quality salt, make sure that you are, you know, seasoning your food as you cook, um, because then you will put less salt on your food when it's finished. Um, and that's really important. So just talking about salt, I have like a little bowl of salt here and I use it all the time. This is what's called a three finger pinch. If you guys have ever seen that like really freaky guy who did that, that salt thing, um, that's exactly what he does. But this is the amount of salt you need. You take your thumb finger, your index finger and your middle finger and you just grab a pinch and hold it up high. That's exactly the amount of salt you need um, per item that you're cooking. And use your palate as you go. You know, cooking is really fun because it helps you sort of understand what foods you like and what foods you don't. And don't be afraid to fuck up. And that's something like people, I, I either hear this, I don't know how to cook because, you know, nobody taught me or I'm just not good. There are so many limiting, limiting beliefs behind cooking. And Everybody can cook. Everybody can make a meal taste good and don't be afraid of making it taste bad because that's the only way you're going to learn how, what you like. It's just as simple as that. So I encourage all of you to get in the kitchen, do a little meditation, um, set yourself up for success with some cutting board etiquette and just experiment because it's super fun. The last thing I want to show you how to make um, and then I'll go over some more foods. Hopefully this is helpful. Um, I'm going to take an orange and I'm going to do a supreme cut. And then this is how I'm going to make a vinaigrette as well as use the actual orange pieces to put in this beautiful salad situation going on. So I'm going to cut off, I forget what kind of um, orange this is. Oh, well, doesn't matter. Just have some citrus because this is going to add some delicious like sweetness and vitamin C into the salad. So I just cut off the top um, to make sure that it's pretty flat. And then I'm gonna cut off the bottom here as well. So the whole idea is that you want both sides of the orange exposed. Um, and I'm gonna work on the side that's the most exposed. And then we'll take these, put these in the trash bin. So this is called a supreme cut. And what I'm gonna do is angle the knife on a curve just to get the orange parts. Um, and it's really fun. So as you can see, this is what I want. I want to cut all the way down so I see just the orange exposed and the rind is off. So don't throw these away. Save these in another bowl. <laughs> this is another tip. Take slices of ginger, your orange peels, put them in a pot with boil, you know, with water, bring them up to a boil, and then make sure it like reduces. This tea is amazing for your lungs. Um, it's called orange pith tea with ginger. So this gets rid of like any like phlegm and gunk you have in your lungs that's just left over. So I definitely, whenever I do this kind of cut, I never get rid of them. I always just save them in a little bowl, put them immediately in a pot with water, boil it up, add some honey with some ginger, done. It's the best thing ever. Um, so it's just really fun to know like how to utilize different parts of the, of the food that you're eating. So then that way you have less waste, you know, you're healing yourself. Um, it's super, super fun. So, and informative. So I did a pretty good job. Here we go. I just want to take all of these little parts off. So the whole idea now is to save the juice as much as possible within the pith and just take out the little, um, just take out the orange slices. And you've seen these in restaurants. So if you notice these little veins here, what I'm gonna do is cut on one side of them on an angle inward and the other side, same thing. And this is what you get. 
This is called a supreme cut. And these are perfect for salads, for anything. So I'm just gonna put those in there. And then I like to hold mine and cradle it like a little baby. And just, boom, they just fall out. And it's super pretty and super fun and really impressive if you're cooking for a loved one, a boyfriend, a husband, a girlfriend, what, whoever, they're super fun. So what this does is it takes out just the orange, oops, it takes out just the orange slice and it keeps the juice kind of intact as much as possible. And this is a great way to add vitamin C into pretty much anything. Um, it's hydrating, it's super good for you. So that's pretty much all of them. So they look like this. So now what I'm gonna do is take a bowl and squeeze all of this in. And I use my hands, I don't care. I think this is the most fun part is just using your hands. Cool, done. So all of these little pieces go into the salad bowl. I have my orange juice here. This is why it's important to have a wet towel because you can just wipe this all down. Done. Now I'm gonna make the vinaigrette. I have a question, let me see. Um, oh yeah, do it ASAP, uh, that is the greatest thing. Like this is so good for your lungs. I'm naturally susceptible to just like bronchial infections because um, my lungs are my weakest organ. So I'm being really careful during this time. Um, if you have phlegm and you always have that like <coughs> thing going on, this is the best thing ever. Just take this, um, here I'll show you how much ginger. If I'm gonna use that much, um, if I'm gonna use, this is about a little less than a cup of orange peels, I use about this much ginger. Just put this in a, in a pot, boil it, reduce it to about half, add some honey in there. It's the greatest thing, it's so healing. And I do, whenever I'm sick, I do that for like, every day for like a month straight and I feel so much better. I don't even have to go to the doctor, it's awesome. So can ask, yeah. Can I ask how much water, is the water covering the yeah, orange yeah. peel? I mean, I put, I, I'm not afraid to use a lot of water. I use like two cups, maybe more. Okay. Yeah, I put a lot in there because the reality is the longer you keep like boiling it, once it hits a boil, lower it to a simmer. Yeah. And I would just keep it uncovered, keep it going at a, like a rolling simmer I mean, for as long as you want. I, I do it for about 20 minutes and then I add some honey in. You know, I ladle some into a, um, my cup, add some honey, maybe some extra ginger in there. Um, if you want to be fancy and put like, you know, another tea bag or something, you can. This is just a base. And then what I do is I just keep it going because it's just going to get more potent and concentrated. I'll just add in more water and just okay. for the whole entire day. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, of course. So now with this, I'm going to, oh, shaking a little bit, sorry about that. Um, I have about a couple, few tablespoons of orange juice and I like to eyeball things. I'm just gonna boop, add in about a tablespoon of olive oil. And I have some white wine vinegar. You can use apple cider vinegar. You can use any kind of vinegar. This is just to give it that like acidic splash. So it's really all about creating balance here. You have the savoriness of the olive oil, you have the um, sweet and tart from the oranges, and then you also have the, the sourness from the um, vinegar. I add just a pinch of salt, and then I need something to whisk with. Oh, well, just gonna use this. And it doesn't have to be fancy. You know, it doesn't have to be full emulsion. It's really just to combine all of the flavors. And then take this. I would like to start with about half to see how I feel. And this is like the easiest kind of salad. This is perfect for your immune system, for your lungs. It looks really pretty. Um, if you want to be extra fancy and add some goat cheese in this, I highly recommend that because it is dang delicious. And that's pretty much it. So that's just an easy recipe that you can use um, and just enjoy for your lungs, um, your digestive system, your blood, um, your immune system. Um, it's really, really good for you. And I can um, post this on my Facebook page if you really, if you like it. Um, yeah. 
other foods that I wanted to talk about really quick. Um, hopefully that was helpful. Is everyone good with that? Yeah? Sweet. Okay. Yay. Um, other foods that I think you should be stocking up on that are also really good for um, your lungs and your digestive system. I got this cabbage, I got to say like a week and a half ago, and it's still in really good condition. Um, when you think about your lungs, think about anything white in color that is nourishing. So this cabbage, although it's green, it's primarily white. Ginger is primarily white. Garlic and onion are primarily white. These are all foods that nourish your lungs. Um, I just got a bag of organic white rice. Definitely stock up on these. You know, if some people aren't a fan of white rice, get brown, but the more grains you can get, the better. And then if you're at home and you're making your stock, use your stock to flavor your rice. It's gonna taste delicious. I mean, you'll be more inclined to cook um, and it's really good for you. Other grains that I recommend, this is black wild rice. Um, anything black in color is really nourishing for your kidneys. You know, even though we're, I'm talking about primarily focusing on your lungs and your immune system, the reality of the fact is everything is connected. So if your you know, heart is working well, your lungs are working well, your kidneys are working well, they're you know, expelling all the bad stuff. Same with your liver, it's processing things out. You're in good shape. Um, so anything black in color is really good for your kidneys. So black rice, black beans, um, black beets even, um, black sesame seeds, they're all really nourishing for your liver, even seaweeds especially. I'm sorry, not your liver, your kidney. Seaweeds are really good for um, healing kidneys and then also dissolving like hard masses in your body. Um, so if you have like cysts, uh, fibroids, anything like that, eat more seaweeds because they really help um, dissolve those masses. Quinoa is really great to stock up on. My boyfriend's not so keen of quinoa, so I gotta eat this all by myself. Um, and then another one that's really great is called millet. And if you've never heard of millet, I got this at Whole Foods in the bulk aisle. I haven't been to Whole Foods since I've been you know, quarantining. I'm sure they're fine. But millet is really great because it's kind of like a grain that is a mixture between the taste of rice, pasta, and grits. And it's absolutely delicious. Um, and you make it like every other grain, but the cool thing about millet is that um, it's an earth element food. It's very grounding and nourishing for you. It's gluten-free, and it is one of the only grains that has all nine amino acids in it for you know, digestion. There's only three grains that have that. Millet, amaranth, and one other one I can't remember off the top of my head, um, but millet is amazing, and sort of if you treat it the way you would treat like a rice and a quinoa, um, it's really, really good. Other ones, cucumber is also really good for your lungs as well. Even though the outside is green, the inside is more white, it's very good for you. Stock up on some apples, sweet treat, especially if you are a person who has a hard time with emotional eating and just binges on junk food and just eats out of boredom. I've been hearing a lot about that lately where just people are so stuck at home and they're like, we don't know what to do. And so they just eat out of boredom. Um, snack on an apple. Apples are really great during this time because they give you that burst of sweetness, crunch. It's like super, super filling. So, and I've just seen a ton of apples. So just get a lot more of them. Um, and they keep outside of the refrigerator forever. So that's another thing that you don't have to store in the refrigerator. I have a question. Let's see, um, any thoughts on different types of onions, white, yellow, or red? Yes, all of them. So they're all good for different things. So white is really good for cooking. They become sweet. Um, yellow, like Vidalia, are obviously very sweet too. Um, I like using red, I'm sorry, white and yellow for cooking purposes. So, and it depends on what you're cooking. So last week I made um, butternut squash risotto and I used a white onion in there because I like how translucent it becomes. So you don't see them within the risotto. I like using yellow onions for more like Spanish dishes and stir fries. Um, and I like keeping um, red onions uh, to more like salads. I like the real pungent flavor in them. Um, so I, I pretty much just stick to salads or even sometimes I'll, I'll slice red onion really thick and put them on the barbecue grill too because they do get really sweet and they look really pretty. But I think all onions are your friend at this time, to be honest. Um, same thing with shallot. Shallot is your friend as well. 
anything in the onion family, scallions, um, chives, you know, all types of onions, shallot, pearl onions, they, they are really, really helpful. And again, they get rid of like all the parasites and gunk in your body. Um, all right, uh, let me see what else I wanted to talk about and uh, that I haven't covered. Oh, how to boost immunity through food and cooking in your home, apart from what I've said. Um, eat as much whole foods as possible. You know, I see the chip aisle and the candy aisle and the canned goods aisle completely out of a lot of things. I mean, they're bare. And then I go to the produce and I see it pretty stocked up. So. I would say get as much fresh produce as possible. Um, if you can get some from your local farmers so you can support their local business, I would do that. Um, and don't feel pressure to like eat all the time at home. If you have some local restaurants, and I know I'm talking about cooking and empowering through cooking, which I, I think is very important, but if you have local restaurants that you know, they, you know they're, they're not part of a big chain, um, and you love them and you support them, get some takeout from them like, you know, once a week because, or twice a week because they may go out of business, business pretty soon. I think the statistic was like 75% of all like privately owned restaurants is gonna go out of business. And that makes me really sad because, you know, they worked really hard to get to where they are and it's really unfortunate. But um, be boosting immunity, um, snack on, whole foods so like apples pears fruits that will really help the more whole the better <clears throat> um get some adequate sleep um try not to drink as much alcohol i remember i was on a call last week with a bunch of amazing women and um one of them said that they really reserve just you know drinking wine for like the weekends it's really easy to just be at home i mean i don't know if you can see we've got a ton of wine over here but it's really easy for me to just say, oh, it's five o'clock somewhere and, and just get a glass of wine. But that's like the, one of the quickest way to lower your immune system. Um, and then, yeah, it keeps me up at night. Another thing is um, try not to eat past like seven or eight at night now that you're at home. Um, I, don't, I don't practice or preach intermittent fasting, but I do think that if you were to fast overnight, and stop eating around like seven, eight o'clock and not eat again until seven or eight in the morning and give your body a full 12 hours of digestion and rest, you will build a better immune system. Um, you are giving your body that time to rest and it's very, very important. So, you know, think about it this way, you know, your body is a car, you know, you turn it off so it can rest, but the engine just keeps on running. You know, the carburetor keeps on running. The thermostat keeps on running. You want everything to shut down. And I think it's really a, a time where we should give ourselves that kind of self-love. Sleep as much as possible. You know, that's the, one of the biggest ways to boost our immunity is through really good sleep. Um, and eat as whole, eat green things as much as possible. If you have access to herbs, get them, even if they go bad, throw them in a stock pot or make like a chimichurri. If you have a food processor, it's really easy to just recycle and reuse these um, types of foods. Last things I wanna talk about that you should get. Um, I have organic rice milk. If you wanna get almond milk, boxed milk, definitely do it because you, know, you can keep these out and um, I'm surprised how many people aren't buying the organic stuff yet. It's kind of funny. Um, and then I talk about this a lot in my challenges and with my clients. It's a staple. I only have a little bit left and I have to get some. Um, get some nettle tea. Uh, I could give the whole hour talking about this, about nettles, but nettles are really amazing. These are dried stinging nettles, they're no longer stinging, but these are amazing for pretty much everything about women. Um, they build, build your blood, they build immunity, um, they heal your lungs, they heal your kidneys, they help your digestive system, they make your hair shiny, your nails shiny and strong. I mean, they're pretty much a go-to for everything. So if you have access to dried nettles, which I mean in Austin, if you're in Austin, you can just go to like any kind of herb shop or just order these online. Definitely stock up on these. I'm, this is all I have left, so I have to get some. And these will really, really help. Um, oh, and did I mention potatoes? Get some potatoes, I think I did. Uh, and that's about it. I wanted to keep, you know, the last 10 minutes. Ooh, buckwheat grain is the other grain for whole protein. Yes, I think you're right. 
love it. I never eat buckwheat. So, you know, it's just one of those things that I don't, um, it's not a thing in my life. I don't really prefer it. But um, I want to open this up and see if anybody has any questions or just anything that they're curious about based on your own lifestyle. And um, yeah, so let's just use the last eight minutes to talk about that. Anybody? Or if you have any other tips. Hi, Alyssa. This is so good as always. I love what you share. Good, thanks. Yay. Um, Alyssa is staying in my apartment right now. And so she's kind of set up with like all the chef things. You pretty much have everything. So I'm excited. Oh, I love it. You're using that cup. Yay. It just makes me so happy. Mm. Um, no questions? Wow. Awesome. Sweet. Thank you.